All eyes ahead for 2019. We're here to report on the future of the Dallas Cowboys. We move forward with new coaches. We break down the draft, fine tune the roster, and ask who's getting paid and who's got to wait. And as usual, we bring you insider access to OTAs and many camps, priming you for 2019. We're the Blitz, and we're bringing it all to you straight from the star. and welcome into the Blitz. This is our draft special. We are going to cover the entire 2019 NFL Draft Weekend for you right here from the Star in Frisco. I'm Lindsey Draper. I'll be joined soon by Bill Jones and special guest Daryl Johnson. We have head coach Jason Garrett coming to us later on in the show to break down these picks. Most Tristan Hill and Connor McGovern from night number two in the draft and the Cowboys throughout free agency really position themselves to be able to take the best available player on their board. We're going to give you all the information you possibly need, break down these picks and let you know how they might fit into the Cowboys at training camp. Hey, they'll be here in a week. What's it going to look like in OTAs? We'll cover all that and much more right here on the Blitz right after this. The Dallas Cowboys Blitz is brought to you by AT&T. More for your thing, that's our thing. And by Dallas Cowboys Football Club. For the ultimate Dallas Cowboys experience, tour the Star in Frisco, where the Cowboys train and work. For more information, visit thestarinfrisco.com slash tours. This segment is brought to you by AT&T. More for your thing, that's our thing. The Indianapolis Colts have traded the 26th pick to the Washington Redskins. And with the 26th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Washington Redskins select Montez Sweat, linebacker, Mississippi State. Continuing the draft special from the star in Frisco here. Now, Thursday night was not exciting for Cowboys fans since there wasn't technically a first round pick, but you might have got excited when you watch what the rest of the NFC East did. Daryl, Bill, I want to pass it over to you and ask you, what were you thinking when the first quarterback, Daniel Jones, went to the Giants? Well, it was very interesting, and I wonder what Jerry Jones was thinking in the Cowboys draft room when he's seeing all these picks by NFC East teams, six first-round picks, and we start with those quarterbacks at the top. Daniel Jones goes number six overall to the Giants, Dwayne Haskins to the Redskins at uh, number 15. Daniel Jones, a guy who has been mentored by David Cutcliffe, of course, who very close uh, with the Mannings. It seemed like a natural fit there. And, and maybe a little bit of concern by the Giants at that point because you weren't sure what quarterback walked Washington was going to go with. There was interest in them going with the quarter. We found out during the course of the draft that they were very, very high on Dwayne Haskins. But because of that 15-17 where you see picks two and three right there, I think that the Giants erred on the side of caution. Make sure you get the guy that you want. You talked about the relationship with David Cutcliffe and the Manning family, so you want to make sure you get that secured. And then the back end of this, boy, it got fun towards the end of the first round. Yeah, and, uh, and with Haskins going to Washington, so many people thought that Washington, if they wanted him, was going to have to trade up. Well, they just sat there, and Haskins came right to him. One year of production at Ohio State, but what a year it was with 50 touchdown passes. Yeah, yeah, and uh, some great skill players to work around, but you, you can't deny the numbers that Dwayne Haskins had during that first year. So it's going to be interesting right now when you look at the NFC East. You know, we have, you know, Dak and, and Carson Wentz that came out that same year. Now you've got the future from the other two teams in your division. So I think this really sets up on that first night of the draft is showing you what the NFC East is going to be like for years to come. Yep, it's going to be very interesting at the quarterback position, Lindsay. Yes, guys, I'm going to have my popcorn ready because now we get to watch, you know, Dwayne Haskins said the league done messed up when the Giants passed on him. He's with the Redskins now. But, Daryl, you mentioned the back half of the first round. The Joneses were sitting in the war room watching a lot of phone calls happen and a lot of movement happen with the rest of the East. Yeah, and I think everybody was concerned a little bit about what was Jerry's response going to be on that opening night. Would he do what he said he would, where he would not tap into 2020 in the first round pick or try and move up? When you started to see all that movement at four, five, and six, what your other rivals in your division are doing, it had to be really hard for him to stay pat. And, and the Giants get a big guy out of Clemson, Dexter Lawrence at uh, number 17 overall. Of course, they're replacing Snacks Harrison there, who has since uh, moved on. But the last three picks there, 
the Eagles, the Redskins, and the Giants, they all use ammunition to move up there. Absolutely, and you've got to get your replacement for Jason Peters, so you feel that somebody else is going to move on Andre Dillard, uh, very athletic left tackle. Montez Sweat, that was a top five talent that because of a health issue and some concerns there was dropping. Washington comes all the way back into the first round uh, to grab him. And then the Giants, again, coming back into the first round, having three first round picks to get DeAndre Baker. Remember, they went after Eli Apple a couple of years ago. That didn't work out. So you need some help in the secondary right there. So very, very aggressive moves by, uh, by your other counterparts there in the NFC East. And uh, so there's Jerry having to keep his power dry <laughs> and watch his Amari Cooper highlight reel uh, throughout the first Still round, a great right? move though. Still worth the 27th that, pick. That's, that's Still exactly worth the 27th right. Pick. That, that's exactly right. And of course the Cowboys finally got an opportunity to make a pick late in the second round, Lindsay. And we will hear from that pick. Tristan Hill was here at the star for a pre-draft visit. We'll hear what he had to say about being surrounded by the hot boys, Rod Marinelli and everything in between still to come on the draft special. This segment was brought to you by AT&T. More for your thing, that's our thing. This segment is brought to you by Formation. Work the Cowboys way at the Star in Frisco. Formation offers workspaces, dedicated desks, and private offices. For more information, visit formationatthestar.com. The 90th pick. In the 2019 NFL Draft for the Dallas Cowboys, selection is Connor McGovern, guard from Penn State. Congratulations, man. Thank you very much. Hey, uh, we are awfully excited uh, to draft you and to bring you to the Cowboys. I'm chance, excited, too. You got a chance to be a hell of a football player. And uh, Thank you. Yeah, you're... Uh, you're absolutely what our team is all about. So can't wait to get you in here and get you to work. I'm excited to come down there. He plays the game hard. He loves it. He's tough. He's physical. Uh, he's just what you want on your football team. And uh, those guys find their way. And you wake up one day and you say, gosh, can you believe we are even thinking how we're going to use this guy or, or something like that? And, uh, you know, when you got five offensive linemen, we all know how tough the game is. Welcome back in into the 2019 draft special everyone. We are continuing our show here and obviously the Cowboys did not get to kick things off until Friday night, but Coach Garrett is joining the set now to tell us all about those picks made in this second and third round. Coach, I want to ask you the way you guys were able to position yourself this offseason making some moves in free agency. How excited were you to get to go after both offense and defensive line? Yeah, it's, it's it's really exciting, and I think it's it's a function of a couple things. I think we've drafted well over the last few years, and so a lot of the guys we've drafted are still on our team, and then we can use free agency to kind of address some smaller needs that we have. Something that we really believe in is once the draft starts, you don't want to be looking up at the board saying, we need this position, or we need this position. You want to look up at the board and say, who's the best guy? And in order to do that, you have to draft well in previous years, and you have to address some things in free agency. We've been able to do both. And I think tonight's draft was a lot about taking the best guy, uh, both in Tristan Hill and Connor McGovern. We feel like we did that. You know, it's interesting when you see the way it fell to the number 58 pick in, in the second round. Uh, you had a number of safeties there. You had several positions that you could have gone after. What was it that set Tristan Hill apart as the guy to pick? We just think he's got a chance to be a really good player. He's young. Uh, he's really big. He's quick. He's explosive. He's powerful. He's disruptive in the running game. He's disruptive getting after the quarterback. He's got a great a quick first step. He's off the ball and into the, into the offensive lineman and into the backfield really quickly. That's something we value. I think if you watch Rod Marinelli's defenses through the years, the best ones have had those guys at that under tackle position, that three technique. And uh, we feel like he has all the traits. And for a big guy, as big as he is, as athletic as he is, uh, he can really be disruptive in the middle of the offensive line. And one of the big things I think that people forget about is when you talk about pass defense, it's not just the coverage on the back end, where you had those safeties that you had in for visits and they were still available at the time. But the pressure up front, and I think he hit it spot on with that historic guy in the under tackle position in Rod's type of defense, the ability to get pressure and collapse that pocket from the inside helps just as much on the back end uh, as a great safety. There's no question. Uh, pass defense starts up front. 
know, the quarterbacks in this league are too good. If you give them an opportunity to drop back and be in a real comfortable environment, I don't care who they are. They're, they're going to tear you up. So you have to disrupt them. You have to make them uncomfortable. And one of the things that we believe in is to have a lot of these kinds of guys. We have a really good defensive line right now. A lot of guys who have played good football for us. We've added three veteran players uh, in free agency or, or via trade. And now to get a chance to add Tristan to that mix, you'd love to have eight guys coming to game day. Each of them have a role. Each of them going in there and really making things happen. The teams that you played on in the 90s, you know, that's what we had. We had eight-man rotation who came in, and those guys you know, made, made the night for the opposing quarterback really challenging, and that's what we're trying to get to. You know, yeah, talking to Tristan Hill, he's got a great personality, <laughs> and he hit it off great with Rod Marinelli. In fact, you know, at Central Florida, they – and he quick, is quick to point this out – they won a national championship uh, his sophomore year there, and he's, he still wears the national championship ring. <laughs> yeah, he, he does have a great personality. We, we spent a lot of time with him. Rod went down and worked him out. Uh, then he came here to our building, and uh, each of us had a chance to get to know him a little bit. And he's just this young, kind of uh, enthusiastic, energetic guy. Uh, I think he really loves people. He loves football. Uh, all the coaches that we talk to about him uh, really feel really good about the kind of guy he is and certainly about the kind of future he has. So we feel like we can bring him here, get him with Rod Marinelli and Leon Lett, some of the veteran guys we have. He's really going to blossom into a player that we like. There's been a lot of great inside players that, that Rod has had the opportunity to work with, but, but one of the things I think that he does a really good job is, is just elevating the playing ability of everybody that he's been around. And, and one of the guys that jumps out with me is Chris Hovan, you know, a guy that probably not a lot of people heard about, but, but with Rod's mentoring, what he turned Chris Hovan into, you mentioned the fact that, that Tristan, you know, he's got all those traits, he's got the ability to do it. Now the technique at this level, working with Rod Marinello, what do you see as his ceiling right now? Oh, I think he has all the stuff. He, he really does. I mean, a big guy with all that athleticism, uh, but Rod's going to really coach him. He's going to coach him hard. And Rod's unique. Uh, you said it. Great players he makes better. Lesser guys he gives a chance to play and have an impact on their team. And, uh, you know, he, he develops relationships with these guys. He's very demanding of them. Uh, he's not, it, it's not an easy day. The meetings aren't easy. Uh, the individual periods aren't easy. He's on them a lot. Uh, but I think they understand where it's coming from. He has the player's best interest in mind. Uh, the other thing that Rod does, not only develop guys individually, but he develops a group. He gets them close to each other where they have each other's backs, and he's been doing it for a long, long time. We're lucky to have him. All right, so now take us uh, to the end of the third round, uh, number 90 pick there, and you go offensive line, an interior offensive lineman who started 12 games at, at guard uh, his last year at Penn State and was a starting center prior to that, Connor McGovern. Yeah, it's the classic example of the blinking light on the draft board. You know, there's a lot of guys that, you know, we think he's going to be long gone. We don't think there's any chance he's going to be there for us in the third round. So you're thinking about these guys, these guys, and you look up and it's like blinking at you. Like, I'm the best player. I'm the best player, you know. And, uh, and that's what we did. And, and, I, and I think, you know, uh, what we talked about earlier about how you build your team through the draft and also through free agency, it allows you to say, you know, we don't have to address this position or that position or reach for that spot. We can take the best player. And he was by far the best player on the board, plays the game the right way. He's tough. He's physical, has enough ability to play both center and guard. And uh, we just really, really like him. And the great thing is it stays true to what you guys are from a philosophy, uh, philosophy uh, on the offensive side of the ball, running the football with Ezekiel Elliott. And, and some people will say, well, that, that looks like it could have been a need. Like they felt like they had a, a need there. It was a luxury pick, but but it's still that blinking light theory. Yeah, again, we've drafted the best players we've drafted when we, we are when we drafted them independent of need. You know, Zach Martin's a great example of that. You know, people would say, you're, you're drafting another offensive lineman, and we drafted him, and he's been a pro bowler for the first five years of his career, one of our best players. So, you know, I, I think when we do that, that's how we build the team the right way. And I think our past, the last few years, how we've drafted, how we've handled free agency allows us to do that. I'm really excited to have him. And, uh, Jason, we appreciate it. And, Lindsay, uh, it'll be fun when these uh, draft picks all get here to the star in Frisco. Yes, not this week, but next week. They're, we're all going to share these guys when they come in. Get to know all of them. Thank you so much, Coach Garrett, for joining us. Next up, you get to see the draft preparation through the eyes of Will McClay coming up on the draft special. This segment was brought to you by Formation. Work the Cowboys way at the star in Frisco.
formation offers workspaces, dedicated desks, and private offices. For more information, visit formationatthestar.com. draft special presented by Ford and now the months the hours the days that go into the draft it all starts with Will McClay the vice president of player personnel and he spends so much time digging in and it all came to fruition this past weekend but we are giving you an inside look at everything that led up to the draft through the eyes of Will McClay. To be the vice president of uh, player personnel for the Cowboys means it's a position of responsibility for the greatest sports franchise in, in, you know, in sports. So that responsibility to bring the right kind of players and the right kind of people into our organization and build a championship is very important. My athletic career wasn't as good as I thought it would be. I went and played arena football and then I started coaching with the Dallas Desperados and again being the defensive coordinator and wanted to come and continue to scout. Um, I had gotten the NFL that way as a lifelong dream, not as a player, but I got in as a scout. We've expanded since then and then I just kind of kept growing to the role that I am now. I describe my role as a facilitator in some ways and then um, a director from a standpoint of where are we light at, what are we looking for on our roster, and then looking at the, all of the players and say, who adds what to our team? I spend a lot more time with relationships more so than the tape. I think part of this whole thing is getting it all together, getting everybody on the same page. While I watch a lot of tape, it's also interacting with different people to try and make sure that we're on the same page. The thing that I really look for when looking at draftees is, 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 is love of football. You can see it on tape. People tell you a lot of different things about a player, but what can you judge for yourself? It's how they play, how they love the game, the things that they do to show that they love the game. My most memorable draft experience was the first draft where I had an opportunity to be in my position now. It was um, you know, kind of the growth, the culmination, being in the room with Jerry and the coaches and uh, knowing that I had a big part in putting this together. It was a point to say, okay, hey, now I'm doing something. Uh, I don't typically sleep the night before the draft. It's like Christmas time. You're trying to open up the presents. You're waiting for Santa Claus. And just, it's the anticipation of it. The Dallas Cowboys select Leighton Vanderesh, linebacker, Boise State. The most rewarding thing is uh, building the team and us having an opportunity to have some success with the pieces that we've added. It's easy to see if you look back at the last five to six years for the Cowboys drafts, you know how big of a part Will McClay has played in all of the Cowboys' recent success. And we're going to take a look at more picks later on in the draft right after this. The Dallas Cowboys Blitz was brought to you by AT&T. More for your thing, that's our thing. And by Dallas Cowboys Football Club. For the ultimate Dallas Cowboys experience, tour the star in Frisco, where the Cowboys train and work. For more information, visit thestarinfrisco.com slash tours. We are so excited to host Kaboo Texas May 10th through the 12th. This is our first ever music, comedy, and art festival. A three day long event that will blend all of the five senses, have a wonderful entertainment, even a Basque pool, Vegas style, right out on the plaza, complete with humor me entertainers as well as great culinary experiences from some of the greatest chefs here in North Texas. Back here in studio to wrap up everything for you from the special edition of our draft coverage right here on the Blitz. Not this coming week, but at the beginning of the next week, all of these draft picks will be here at the Star for physicals. We will keep you guys updated on OTAs, mini camps, everything in between. So I'm Lindsay Draper for Bill Jones, Daryl Johnston, head coach Jason Garrett, and everyone in between. We hope you enjoyed the show. And we're going to leave you guys with some really awesome secret audio from when the coaches in the war room gave these players the call that changed their lives forever. Chris Kidd. How you doing, man? I'm good, I'm good. How about yourself? We're doing fantastic. He's already blown it. This is Jones with the Cowboys, my friend. 
How you doing, sir? Hey, Connor. We're uh, proud to call you and tell you, you are now a Dallas Cowboy. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate that. And Tony, this is Jerry Jones with the Dallas Cowboys, and uh, glad to be talking to another Cowboy. Yes, sir. Mike, I want to be uh, first congratulate you. The Dallas Cowboys just uh, <laughs> Excited about you being a Dallas Cowboy. Yes, sir. I'm ready to go.